You remember school gym class when they had you do the fitness gram push-up test? Half the class probably couldn't even do one push-up. Then there was that one bro giving the floor the entire class at 2036, thinking he was breaking national push-up records. And then there was the chosen one who could genuinely do like 50 plus push-ups in a row without even struggling. One thing for sure was your ass was not the chosen one. I wasn't the chosen one either. When I first started out, I was barely able to do three normal push-ups. But after spending over a year in the gym, learning how to train properly and building a noticeable amount of muscle, I am now able to do 20 clapping push-ups without even needing to directly train for push-up specific strength. I skyrocketed my strength on barbell lifts like bench presses, which in turn added to my push-up strength. But now imagine if I train push-ups directly with the intent to increase them. Wait, so you don't train push-ups and you're just a gym bro? What do you know about gaining push-up strength? The thing is, gaining strength isn't just about specific exercises. It's about simple key principles repeated over and over, which can be applied to a variety of different exercises. The important thing is that because these principles are simple, they're actually somewhat literally anybody can do anybody can make time in their days to do some push-ups but almost nobody does it so many people around you just live their lives not knowing what their bodies are capable of how jack they could become if they applied simple principles consistently and with effort so here we will start with the point where you can't even do a single knee push-up and take you all the way to the chosen one at your school all it takes is your effort and your belief bro Since we're going to be doing different types of push-ups, I'll just give you four guidelines that will make sure your form is solid across different variations. 1. Torso stiffness. Whenever you're doing some type of body weight exercise like this, make sure your core is engaged and keep your ribs down while you breathe in and out. This might be something you have to practice, but you can literally do it right now while standing up to get a feel for it. You should also make sure your body is neutral in general. The rest of your body is a bunch of rigid bones, but your spine is a bunch of logs stacked on top of each other, allowing it to move and bend. The fact that it can bend can cause energy leaks when you're trying to apply force from your upper or lower body, which is why we want the core engaged as its job is to stiffen the spine as much as possible. Would you rather push a box with a pool noodle or a metal pole? Your elbow should never be flared. A common mistake is to make a T-shape with your elbows. This is causing internal rotation and impingement of the shoulder, which can lead to injury. Instead of that, make more of an arrow shape with your elbows. Also, make sure you're not moving your forearms during the push-up. They should stay vertical for the most part. You'll have to experiment around a little to find a hand placement that works for you. 3. Scapula movement. On the way down, make sure you also think about squeezing your shoulder blades back, and then on the way up, also think about protracting them forward. Your scapula should move with your arms as that's its natural function. 4. Range of motion. It doesn't do anything for you counting reps that you didn't go all the way down for. Chest should touch the floor or the object you're pushing off of. Once you get these things down, you have some pretty good push-up form, so let's start with the schedule. You will be training on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. This schedule can be shifted around to your liking and gives you a three times a week frequency for push-ups. You don't need to be doing push-ups every single day like the One Punch Man workout. Training the same movement every day is actually counterproductive. You get weaker and smaller during training, but grow outside of training. So having those four rest days for the muscles that do push-ups is just as important as the training itself. Here's some basic lifting terminology you will need to know. A rep is one movement of an exercise, such as one push-up, and a set is a bunch of reps done after another, such as 12 push-ups. Since push-up strength varies so much, I'm not going to give you a specific number of reps to go for in each set. Instead, you will be training to failure or close to it. Training to failure simply means you stop the set once you reach a rep where you simply just cannot complete it without having to cheat your form or something. If you reach 8 reps and couldn't complete the ninth, you failed at 8 reps. If you were to go back in time and do it again, but stop at 6 to 7 reps, that would be called training close to failure. Rest times are the time you take to recover in between sets. Once you finish a set, you should take as long as you need to feel ready again. Generally, if you're training close to failure or to failure, you should take at minimum two minutes of rest. It might feel like too much, but longer rest periods are better for strength, as the more ready you are, the more strength you can output for each set. Each workout will start with three reps of your main push-up variation to failure. The next slots are optional and can include three sets of another push-up variation or some type of back exercise for another three sets. Push-ups aren't this magic exercise that grows your entire upper body, only a fraction of it. Training your back and growing it along with your push-up muscles is necessary for making sure you don't start developing imbalances. The other push-up variation can simply just be another type of push-up exercise you can do. It doesn't even have to specifically be push-ups. Some exercises that work here are dips, shoulder taps, and planks. The back exercise can be pull-ups, 
table rows, single arm pullovers, etc. In order to figure out what type of push-up is right for you to start with, find a push-up variation that is decently challenging, but you can still complete above 5 reps of. With push-ups, the angle of your body matters. When you're flat on the ground, you don't have any incline, but the more you incline yourself, the easier push-ups become, since more load is placed on your feet slash knees. And the lower you are inclined, the harder push-ups become. So since I'm assuming you can't do any knee push-ups, the next best option for you is to do push-ups off a chair or bed. If you can't even do those, you can always just find somewhere higher to push off of. As for when to do this workout during the day, you can honestly do it whenever. This workout shouldn't take any longer than 30 minutes, so you can literally get it done in the morning before school, before work, or even before sleep. You can even do your homework while working out at the same time like I did at one point. You do a set, then take 3 minutes of rest in between to do some math problems. Just gotta get creative because nobody has no time to work out. Now that you know your schedule and how each day is structured, we can move on to progression. Every time you work out, you have to do it with the intention of getting stronger. There are three basic ways of getting stronger on an exercise of your choosing. 1. Adding load. This can be done by adding plates to the bar. However, you're not a barbell, so for push-ups and other bodyweight exercises, you can wear a backpack with load inside of it and increase the load in there. 2. Adding reps. And 3. Adding sets. There is one more way though, but it requires you to get stronger using the other methods, and that is switching to a harder variation of the exercise altogether, such as graduating from knee push-ups to regular push-ups. Here's the main progression progression you will be using that can incorporate all of these. Goal Reps Progression You will start by picking a target number of reps you want to achieve for a certain exercise. A good mark should be around 15 reps before you then switch to a harder variation. When you switch to a harder variation, your reps should decrease quite a bit, putting you below 15 again. If you find switching to the harder variation is too challenging, like if you can only get less than 5 reps, then aim for 20 plus reps on the previous exercise instead of just 15. So essentially, every time you do your main push-up variation, you will simply try to add just one more rep each session until you reach your goal reps. Eventually though, you will probably stall trying to do this over and over again. So here are three ways to increase your strength so you can continue making jumps and reps. If you've actually tried my advice and tried to increase reps, you'll notice that you can only get the highest number of reps on your first set, but the next two usually drop off in reps. So instead of adding reps to your first set, try adding reps to your other two sets until you get the same amount of reps for every set or very close to it. Then try adding reps to your first set again. Try to keep reps the same while adding load to yourself through a backpack. This will increase your strength more steadily than adding reps then once that period is over remove the load and try adding more reps again repeat if you wish take the max reps you can do and subtract it by two then do this many reps across all your sets each session adds another set where you're trying to get the same number of reps per set if you add a set and you can't get the same number of reps the next session don't add a set and try to get the same number of reps on the last set repeat this cycle until you've reached five sets of the same reps then once you do that go back to three sets and try to get as many reps as you can again which should hopefully let you add another rep to your total. All of these are for the purpose of eventually adding a rep. Adding reps should be your main progression, so you can reach your goal reps and move on. It's not the end of the world if you can't progress a certain session. Sometimes we just have bad sessions, but your strength should be going up in the bigger picture. You might eventually run out of push-up variations to do, and in that case, focus primarily on just adding load instead of switching the variation, and also taking your target reps past 15 to 20 reps. Past 30 reps will be more muscular endurance, however, especially the farther you go past 30. Just know there's a difference between between strength and endurance. Just because you can do push-ups with a lot of extra weight doesn't mean you can easily do a very high amount of reps on normal push-ups. So staying consistent and following this will get you stronger at push-ups. You'll start to notice your body getting more jacked too. The key to hypertrophy training is literally called progressive overload, which is a fancier term for progression on your exercises. Make sure that you have some kind of note-taking app on your phone or some kind of notebook slash pen. This is so you can write down the sets, reps, weight, and exercises you're going to be doing each day. The point is to have an objective logbook of the workouts you've done so you can always be sure as hell you're making the right progressions. Here's how I write mine down. And whenever I'm doing the exercise the next session, I'll keep track like this and then replace the old log like this. This is vital to do so I would get in the habit of it as soon as possible. As for recovery, make sure every night you are getting 6 to 8 hours of sleep. I know half of you aren't getting enough sleep, and if you won't do it for the countless other benefits in your life, then at least do it for your gains. For your diet, I have many other videos on those, but the main thing you need to focus on is eating as many healthy protein sources as you can, and then just generally eating clean foods, like minimally processed cooked foods. Whatever your mom makes works well. Here are some of my top protein sources. Greek yogurt, nuts and nut butters, milk, eggs, beans, cheese, chicken, beef, pork, 
salmon, shrimp, protein powders, and protein bars. If you find yourself to be skinny slash skinny fat, add a meal or two to your day. And if you are actually medically overweight slash obese, then remove a meal from your day. Either extra calories from the added meal will fuel your growth, or excess fat will be forced to fuel growth by removing a meal. That's about it for progression and recovery. Hopefully I convince you that you can get way stronger and way more jacked at home by just following a basic routine of push-ups. Maybe after a while of doing this, you want more though. And you can definitely add extra exercises like for your arms and upper back, etc. But what you should be prioritizing instead is probably the fact that you haven't trained legs at all. A great exercise you can add in each day that you can do at home is assisted single leg squats on your toes. Apply the same principles of failure and progression and you'll get bigger quads. However, there will still be parts of your leg left neglected. A pretty decent strategy would be to train your upper body at home and then go to the gym two times a week to train your legs so i got just a video for you right here to help you choose good leg exercises to get caked up and grow your legs and that's about all i have to share with you in this video today brother there will be a link for you to sign up and download the free push-up program from this video and there will also be a link to the discord server if you want to interact with me and other random fitness enjoyers so what are you waiting for go start working and take action you can like and subscribe if you'd like and i hope you have a great day